Hey everyone, welcome back to another Halloween special. So today I will be reading some Reddit stories for you that I find personally creepy and I just really like reading and watching scary anything. If you enjoy these kinds of videos, please do me a solid and let me know in the comments. Like this video and subscribe if you haven't already. I will be telling two stories today, same as my last video, which I will be linking up here. If you haven't watched that, go ahead and click the link. So grab your popcorn, turn off your lights. Let's get ready. This is from the subreddit Paranormal Encounters and was submitted by foreign underscore plant underscore 1237 entitled I don't know what the thing outside my window was, but my friend has seen it too. Hi everyone. A few nights ago, I almost left my window open after dark. And it reminded me of this story, so I wanted to tell it. I still have no clue what the dog creature was, and I was hoping for some insight. Firstly, I'd like to give some information about how my bedroom and house is set up, so everything makes a little more sense. My bedroom is set up like a square. My bedroom door is tucked in the bottom right corner with my bed up against the opposite corner, with the foot of the bed facing towards the top of the square. In the front of the square, there are two windows at the foot of my bed, with maybe a yard of wiggle room so I can walk to my door. Last year was really rough for me, and my room was incredibly messy, so the only way I could get to my door was to hop off the foot of my bed and walk past both windows to leave my room. Anyway, under the two windows in my room is a small roof covering a room from the first floor. The roofing extends a foot past the room's walls on all sides, and there is no way to get to this roof unless you went through the windows. There is no way to get on top of my house at all. No trees, no fence, no ladders, nothing. Last year, I was up late at night listening to music. It was almost 12 a.m. and it was completely dark outside with the only light in my room being from a shitty lamp I've had since I was a kid. In order for me to be able to sleep, I have to have my fan on. Otherwise, I'll overheat and be really uncomfortable. Same thing with me. I can't sleep in the heat. I am from the Philippines, but I think that's why I'm so like uncomfortable when it's too hot because I love being in air conditioning. <laughs> Because my fan is always on, sometimes loose papers on my floor will flap around, so I'll just get up and move them so I don't have to listen to it. This night, though, I heard a noise that didn't sound like paper from the foot of my bed. I was confused and paused my music to listen. It got louder, and I looked to where the noise was coming from. There was nothing on the ground, but when I looked up, a visceral fear that I have never felt before ran through me. At first, I thought it was a dog outside my window or a fox, but it was too unnatural. It was peeking into my window, and all I could see was its head and its pure, white, unblinking eyes. That creature was the thing causing the noise, which I realized was scratching on the metal mesh outside my window. We stared at each other. It was huge. The creature started walking along both of my windows, scratching along the metal until it disappeared off to the side. Its back looked similar to a porcupine. I can't even describe it. It was just sharp and dangerous and made my breath itch. I waited a few minutes and thinking it was gone, I started inching towards the foot of my bed so I could get the hell out of my room. It walked back across, scratching the mesh before sitting at the window in front of me and just staring at me. It paced between my windows for a bit before walking off to the side and disappearing, keeping those white eyes on me the entire time. Once I knew it was gone, I kept my eyes on the window at all times and backed out of my room. I sprinted down the hall to tell my parents who were very disinterested, and that was that. I walked back into my room and kept the lights on as I cried and just stared at my windows. 
I've slept with my lamp on since then. A few months later, I had to move schools. That's where I met Ali. We bonded quickly and became good friends. Seven months into our friendship, she opened up to me about her paranormal experience and how she thinks she has some things that follow her around. She told me a lot of stories, but the last one made me stop. Ali started complaining about this dog that she's seen a few times across her life and how it freaks her out. Before then, I had never told anyone about the creature I saw outside my window, but she described it perfectly. After she finished, I opened up about how I saw the exact same thing. And since then, I've been trying to help her with her spiritual attachments. I've always dealt with paranormal stuff and I'm very spiritual, so nothing usually phases me. I mean, I've been dragged out of my bed by the leg when a spirit was mad at me. I've been woken up in the middle of the night by a spirit trying to talk to me. And I have seen auras around people. But this was a rare occasion that something genuinely freaked me out. Ali is dealing with some demonic stuff. Like I'm talking scary demonic stuff. She lives on native island, Wampanoag tribe land. I'm not sure if I pronounced that properly. And she has dealt with some of their supernatural creatures before. And my town also has Native American roots. Which makes me wonder if the dog could be something native? Maybe it was scooping me out before I met her, since I've helped her manage the supernatural stuff in her life. I have no clue. If anyone has insight, please let me know. So, I kind of believe this story because I come from the Philippines and I come from a small province called Iloilo. And we have a lot, a lot of creatures and folk tales. And I actually have a story about the Aswang and I will be linking that video up here and down below as well. That is something that has plagued me. I can never sleep with my windows open. And if the windows are open, I have to have like that mesh or something that protects me because it is scary to think that something is flying in the middle of the night, you know, going to window and window, watching you from the outside of your house with wings. Anyway, it's something that I have never actually experienced before personally, but I've known people who have experiences with these creatures and even my own grandmother has seen certain creatures before so i do believe my grandmother she's a very pious woman she would never lie so things like that make me tend to believe stories like this also him saying that they've experienced paranormal experiences like being pulled by the leg when they were sleeping i believe that because i did watch a documentary of this man being haunted by a spirit and there's this paranormal group that wanted to study this more and study the haunting of this man and so they set up a um a bedroom in the church and they were just putting some cameras on him putting some extra like microphones around the room and they just observed him as he was sleeping and one night they caught the spirit pulling his leg out of the bed yeah i yeah it I don't think it's fake. I 100% I, I, I believe it. So I tend to believe this story. But we are going to go to our second story of the day. And this story is a comment shared by no underscore invite underscore 1215. When someone asks, what is something you swear you saw but have no proof of? There have been a few instances. But one of the most recent happened in 2021. I was living with my sister and our two dogs in Brooklyn renting the first floor of a townhouse. I slept with the dogs in my bed every night, and one time at around 2 a.m., my dog Milo started kicking me in the ribs with her hind legs. She kicks her hind legs when she needs to use the bathroom, but she's never done it to me in bed at that random R or that aggressively. She wouldn't stop, so I took her and her other puppy out for a walk around the neighborhood. As I'm walking, I feel a hand tapping on my shoulder. When I whip my body around, startled, absolutely no one is there. This gave me chills and makes my skin crawl. I'm spooked and decided to fast walk straight home. And as I'm walking, I'm remembering this paranormal Netflix show I had just watched days prior 
where they said an invisible shoulder tap could mean that there is someone on the other side trying to warn you of something. But then I'm like, okay girl, you're losing it. Well, I get back to my block and I see a windowless van parked directly in front of my townhouse. My stomach drops. A group of three or four masked men were outside the front door of our unit, which was accessible from the street with a crowbar, hammer, and other tools. My sister was still sleeping inside. No one else was on the street except for me. Thankfully, I had my phone, so I called the cops and started screaming at the guys from across the block, where I was hidden from their view. They immediately fled. This whole long, uneventful story is just to say that I feel that supernatural forces were at play that night. Otherwise, it's crazy to me how that eerie shoulder tap coincided with the attempted robbery. I always tell people this story and they're like, wow. But I feel like they don't understand how chilling it was for me to have experienced it. And I can't imagine what would have happened if the men had gotten inside. The situation could have escalated very badly. Now, I honestly feel so safe when my pets are with me. The other day, I'd slept in a room where there was a dresser at the foot of my bed with a mirror, which I had removed from the room, of course, and then a couch, like a little singular couch next to it at the foot of my bed. And I was like, nah, I can't sleep like this. So I borrowed my boyfriend's dog and we, I, I had my boyfriend's dog sleep with me in the room and I felt so much safer because I believe that pets have a another, they can see through things and just like little kids where they can actually see things. And if they're not like reactive at all, then I feel like, okay, I'm good, I'm good because I feel like they sense certain energies. I'm not really sure about the shoulder tap thing. I've never really heard of that before, but I do remember in the Philippines, I was told that if you see a person without a head, that's like a sign that you're about to like, you know what I mean? And so the thing to do to remove that curse is to slap the headless thing and you'll be fine. So I've never experienced that. I've never heard anybody experience that before. But there are so many stories that people like, you know, conjure up and they pass it on from generation to generation that are just so interesting and creepy. And it's nice to hear people experiencing things like that. But at the same time, I never want to experience anything like never. I'm, I'm good. I'm good. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the story times and I hope you watched all of my other story times i will be linking them up here and down below as well if you do like videos like this please don't forget to hit that like button comment down below any experiences you have or if you even believe any of these stories that i'm sharing with you and do subscribe if you enjoy my content i hope to see you in my next video and happy halloween bye